Alright, now I'm going to ride a Model T here at Greenfield Village and uh, Dearborn. I think they're normally supposed to hand crank that back in the day. How, uh, how many of these parts are original on these cars that they run around through here? Uh, we do ride the original things that we have from 1914 to 27, but we don't do anything modern in them. We repair, we repair with original parts where we can. Obviously things like tires, uh, belts like that, we have manufactured. But these are the real deal. All cool. three years. Except that we are on paved roads, so that's a little bit of a modern cheat. <laughs> Could ride a little better. A little, we're not going to bounce you right out of the car. It's yeah. frowned upon. Cool. Um, but they are, they are the real deal here. We got multiples coming in right now, all at the same time. It's about like the Volkswagen Beetle 68 that I learned to drive on. on my mom. <laughs> because it, it is a, what you might call a semi-automatic transmission. Because the way it drives is your accelerator up here. Now, obviously the Volkswagen had a, a throttle on the floor. I never knew the accelerator was a lever by the steering wheel of these things. This is where the gas happens. So then you... Over here, and hit that pedal, you're going to back up. To get going in forward, you press that pedal to the floor, you get low here, let off the gas, slowly let the pedal rise to the top of the string, and now you're in high gear. The low and high was all you had. New generation of drivers now can't even drive a stick or operate crank windows. They uh, nope. they wouldn't know what to do in they this thing. They wouldn't know which do. way to face when they sat down. We, we do have some young folks that are in our driving program, and they do quite well. Um, they are the ones that I think this would be my retirement job. You know, it's a lot, of, and that's what we mostly have. We either have young folks that are finishing up a uh, college degree. And they're here to do that, you know, working while they're doing that. Or we have a bunch of people that have retired from somewhere, and this is what they're doing uh, for their retirement job. What's crazy is when this whole park was built, these things were could have been only two years old. Right. Yeah. So they be they were modern cars. That, yeah. When when Henry Ford uh, built the complex, it was 1929. He had just finished. Model T, and he had moved on to the Model A. Correct. Didn't he have some downtime when he stopped uh, to? Because yeah, he was, he didn't want to change. Uh, he didn't want to stop the T. Right. But Chevy was but, overtaking him with upgrades and everything, progression. Well, and, uh, the biggest problem was financing. Financing basically killed the Model T because Ford was so uh, dead set against it. He said. Never put yourself in debt. That's a bad thing. There's no money. But he didn't want to do the financing, and his thing was we can lower the price of this car, and people will still be able to buy it. They won't have to be in debt. The problem is, if you lower the price of the car too much, you don't make any money off of it. Yeah, your cost of goods still going to go up eventually. Right. Materials. So at that point, Edsel's coming to his dad with the books going, Dad, look at this. We're only making about four bucks on a new car. We can't keep doing this. So we finally talked him into stopping building the Model T. So they stopped um, in 1927. They had a big closing ceremony at the Highland Park plant. They rolled.
model T, 15 million model T off the line. And uh, yeah, I saw that. And that was the symbolic end of the model T. Now, he continued to build everything that he had parts for. But by the end of 1927, he had run out of parts and there were no more new models. So wasn't there a downtime between the changeover to yeah, the A? Six months. Six months, yeah. He, uh, he stopped building the Model T in May of 1927, and the first of the Model A's didn't roll off the line until January. And how long did the Model A run for? Four years. Four? Yep. And what followed that? It was replaced by another B. A, a B? As in boy? Yep. And then, at that point, is moving assembly line and so I've got his uh, his V8 engine he already had the moving assembly line yeah. he was tinkering with his new V8 engine he wanted to build a bigger engine but he wanted to put it in a smaller compartment everybody else that was doing these cylinders were just lining them all up and these cars had a nose on them that was two blocks long so um, no, we can figure out a different way. We can put it into a smaller engine compartment. So in 1932, he unveiled his V8 engine. Yeah, the Ford V8. Yeah. And these were shipped all over the world. They were built all over the world. Oh, he had assembly uh, yeah, places. Had other assembly I didn't know that. Plans. In Europe, he had assembly plants in Australia, in South America, in Canada. Oh, a clown horn. So, uh, yeah, it was easier to build them on site than to ship them everywhere. Oh, yeah. They would ship the parts, and they would be assembled and sold there. Yeah. You ship a lot more parts than you can uh, finish right. automobiles. Right. Right. What's the biggest things that fail in this these cars running around the village here? Tires. Tires? Flat tires and transmission problems. Transmission problems. Yeah, I would imagine transmission. Yeah. Because it's eight hours a day of running this transmission stop at those companies. Sure. Enjoy yourself. Thank you. Click on that to uh, read it, and here's your prices on the. Uh... All right, so how was that riding in a Model T? Alrighty then.